We've got flags and banners, and if you mind your manners, we might even get to standards and what they represent. So just take my boy's hand, and we'll both try to understand how this vexillion logic podcast could be flagged for content. Flagged for content. What's up, Vexheads, and welcome to episode 29 of Flagged for Content. It's the only podcast where the host recorded most of it with his normal, like, you know, bone, hip bone, and then recorded this intro with Titanium, where that used to be. And this may actually be the only podcast like that. I haven't checked, and I don't know how. Anyway... Uh, you will have known that if you've been paying attention on our social media, especially the Instagram, I've got some cool little diplomatic flags on my walker here to try and feel less, well, you know, and, um, yeah, if you are not on our Instagram, it's not just pictures of me going through surgery. There's like also other stuff, uh, it turns out. And a lot of that is flags. One of those things that there is, is a game I call fresh flags which recently kind of underwent an overhaul, underwent an overhaul. I guess it works. And I'm keeping score now. People are taking it a little bit more seriously now. And it's always been how you get the shout out on this show. And well, almost always. But uh, yeah, looks like it's about to get even more heated in there. So go check out our Instagram for that. I am not going to draw this out. Oh, wait, I need to shout out who that was this week. Guessing the well, I don't think I should say which flag yet because it's still ongoing, but the winner this week is A.V. Cohen. That's A.V. Cohen with a K. So A.V.K.O.H.E.N. Give them a follow. Great follow. Um, they were also the first one that ever won a shout out on the show on episode one. So they had a different uh, handle then. But anyway, it's also a Flags for Good podcast, which I say every week. I think my flag in the background fell down and I can't really fix it right now, but go check out flagsforgood.com for more info. They are expanding their selection and we have a few uh, cool tie-ins coming up with them. So check that out too. I've gone on for too long and I cannot sit that comfortably. So enjoy this episode with Brian Stokel. I know I sure did. It was a lot of fun. We recorded this April 20th, but uh, not celebrating, if that makes sense. Uh, people who get it will get it. And... Yeah, next week we've got a surprise mystery guest or guests. And the week after that, probably back to our usual programming. So without going any longer, folks, we've got another one this week. You know what I'm talking about. You know him from his North American City Flags Tournament in 2022. You know him from walking around town with a flag for shameless promotion. Also a great way to find him in a crowd. And you know him as the creator of the San Francisco Fog and Gold Flag. It's Ryan Stokel! What's up, Brian? <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm having a good day because I'm on uh, Flag for Content. Exactly, right? That's what everyone says. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a <laughs> shameless compliment. Exactly. I, I've heard you have been having quite a flaggy day, though. You were sending me yeah. pictures on your walk home of uh, exactly what I said in the intro, walking around with yeah. a flag. <laughs> well, I do own a handful of flags and I'm like, I can't my my building, I can't hang them off because it's made of old redwood. And it's like it, I, it on one of my flags almost it fell into the street because it's so great. Right. And so I'm yeah. like, okay, I'm going to use this six foot tall pole that's a spinner, which I highly recommend. And I'm going to walk around with it. And, you know, at first it was a lot of the time it was my, the San Francisco flag I made, this one. But then I'm like, oh, thank you, flag for, or thank you, uh, flag for good, flags for good. I've got an earth flag. I've got a Ukrainian flag. I've got a Juneteenth flag. And today it was Ukraine, and um, I got a lot of toots on the cars, and uh, even a guy giving uh, me a big support Ukraine, fuck Russia. Nice. Yeah. I assume that that's, that's definitely more... Uh, I have not walked around here in Tennessee with a Ukraine flag, but I mm -hmm. assume you're much more likely to get that kind of 
positive yeah. bump there in San Francisco <laughs> yes. than I might I, be. Although, and I, I've, I've actually wondered, because if I walk around all the different neighborhoods here, uh, you will see Ukrainian flags in every mm. neighborhood here. And I don't know if that's, I would assume there are some across the country, but I don't know if the density is the same. Yeah, not quite around here. Um, yeah, honestly, like like I live in like kind of a subdivision and there's I don't think any that I've seen in here other uh -huh. than the one that I have, which is also a flags for good one. Right, right. And uh, yeah, and um, nothing if not a company, man. Although I right. got that before. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, a little bit downtown, there's like kind of one street that does flags on either side that's got like okay. a pedestrian walkway. But it's, you know, it's it's set up and managed by the city for that so i yeah it's usually like it on juneteenth it'll have like the uh pan-african flag okay i think it's had the ukrainian flag it's had uh various pride flags a little bit of everything which for the south i'm honestly happy to see any right. and all of that so right yeah i can tell you when i was excited that enough people purchased the the flag behind me um Although there's a slight, the colors are slightly off on that. We can go on that tangent later. We will, we will. Um, but uh, it was pleasantly surprising uh, seeing them flying in a handful of places. But the Ukraine level is off the charts. It's it's almost equal to the pride flag that you see all over San Francisco. Right, it's a gotcha. down a little bit, but it's it almost got to pride level. Yeah, sure. That's that's honestly, uh, I may actually wrap that question into kind of the beginning questions that I asked the guest yeah. is like, hey, so where you're at, because we're getting more and more and different international guests. Right. And uh, yeah, it's interesting to see. I know I was in France and Germany a year, just over a year ago, mm -hmm. and there were Ukrainian flags everywhere uh, mm -hmm. in both, even in the smaller towns. Oh, wow. And like even like we went to Apernay, which is like the capital, well, quote unquote, capital of Champagne. It's it's mm -hmm. got an avenue of Champagne. It's anyway, <laughs> folks, you should go. I'll probably put some yeah. fancy French music under this part. But exactly. Uh, but yeah, no, it was everywhere in Germany. They even had an entire square that was in front of the Russian embassy that was just Ukrainian flags everywhere. Oh, wow. I imagine that has not changed. Right. I mean, and frankly, it's a lot closer to home for them for from a war stance, you know, the threat and whatnot. Yeah. 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 They're right next to Poland, which is right next to Ukraine. Right. Right. Indeed. All right. Well, we got to move on a little bit. I have to tell the Vex heads what is on the flagpole today. So first, we are going to actually have an over and underrated. I know I failed at doing that last week. I am going to talk to Brian about that flag attorney that I mentioned up top. We will, of course, go over the long and wild history of San Francisco's flag <laughs> uh, and propose some alternatives, as you can see. And we'll chat a little bit about California's, hopefully, if we have time. And we are going to end with a quiz again. I didn't last week, but I promise I will this time. Anyway, before we get to any of that, Brian... I like to ask my guests, what is your favorite flag? My favorite flag, it's it's a classic, but it's mired in a, a complicated history. It's the mashup known as the Union Jack. All right. Um, my father's from England, or I'm sorry, Britain. Um, he is from the north of England. So, um, so I've got a lot of family over there, been there a lot. Um, so, and I think it's also a great example of oh wow we mixed three flat or actually yeah three flags you never the welsh flags never been in there um and it came out strangely good even though it's a weird design mashup yeah and then of course it's weighted by both positive and horrific colonial history stuff too and ireland sure. and whatnot so yeah no it's it's definitely one of those that kind of like you said at the end there, it's definitely polarizing for yeah. one. I, I think I cannot even remember if it was on my show or if it was on uh, the show that flag session and flags and 50 and Joey do together Two Kiwis, a 
Britain oh, right. Yank. I always get the order wrong. Um, but they were talking about one of them was saying it was overrated. I don't remember if I've had anyone say it was underrated, but I think I have. And it's really? just one that elicits a lot of responses. Yeah, yeah I think I've had somebody say it was underrated. Is what? What's that? I don't think it's underrated, but it's it is mired in a very deep history. You know, ironically, yeah. now the English flag. When I used to go there as a kid in the seventies and eighties, you never saw the English flag. You right. just saw some Union Jacks, but. Like, I remember my dad wearing a bucket hat at the beach that had the Union Jack on it. Mm. And now the you see the English flag, which I think is pretty boring, um, even though I have English blood in me. Um, it, but it's also even more weighted with that um, history and, and some bad weight to it as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, I talked about this on the one that for you and I is going to come out tomorrow for the listeners came out last week. But uh, right. talked to Nasha Gagnabin from the, the SFV, the French Flag Society, and it's similar in, in France there. It's uh, there. It's seen as a, you know, keep France French kind of thing. Whereas I know the English English flag, just the St. George is kind of right. seen as a keep England English thing. And everything that comes along with that. So right. Although I I lived in France for three years, and I had the luck to live there during '98 when the World Cup happened. And they oh yeah, Sunyol. Yeah. Because they won the World Cup, or because they were hosting the tournament, and they were doing well, people were coming out waving the French flag, and mm -hmm. even my socialist friends or left-wing friends were like yeah vive la france and they would never have dared do that right <laughs> it's the same what you just said about the your host from the french vexological association yeah it's it's funny because like that also implies like that they have them on standby for that moment <laughs> <laughs> hey they have like, been you didn't get four, that. four world cups in the last 25 years yeah yeah <laughs> No, yeah, that makes sense. All right, cool. So favorite, that's obviously the one we're going to have a quiz on later. Let's right. get to the over and underrated. And okay. uh, we can go in whatever order you like on those. Um, let's go. Let's go. Let's put the 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 weight. Well, yeah, let's go for the good, the the friendly first, the underrated. Okay, cool. So we'll end on a bad note, in other words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I okay. want that, 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 the, the the initial friendly vibes initially mm -hmm, and then, mm -hmm. so you can hear where we're going with this for the overrated it's going to sure. be controversial <laughs> um yeah is the underrated the I, it was a hard choice but when i did the flag sir the tournament last year um i crazy enough i did 80 flags probably about 60 of them are pretty good or excellent mm -hmm. um but there were about two or three that I thought were fabulous and they failed in the tournament or didn't get, they maybe went one level and then fell off. Gotcha. The, the one I thought was fabulous that didn't go anywhere and there was Aspen, Colorado. Okay. Which I, most I people look I don't this think one up. have seen. You don't think it's what? I don't think many people have seen it. Yeah, I don't I don't either. Like uh I would say I it's definitely underrated. I don't even know if it's rated because right. I don't know if enough, enough people even know of it. Right, I did right. have to look it up. Uh I, and I I do like it. I do like it. I would say again, definitely underrated. It should be at least rated. <laughs> but, right, right. Was well, that I one that like I... crashed out in the first round or something? Yeah, or? it crashed out very quickly. Mm. Um, the and then the reason I like it is it's it and it break it you know there's the five um, good flag principles and even yep. they even the Nava has said they're not like hard and fast rules but some people take them relatively seriously mm -hmm. um, and they're all good spirited but this one I love it because it's it's pretty basic in its design a white field for snow. 
a green aspen leaf and a snowflake. I believe it's in white on top of the, the aspen leaf. And the interesting thing is in concept, that's pretty basic, but the edge of the leaf is very detailed as mm -hmm. is the snowflake. And so I love it because if you're far away, you get it. But if you're close, you notice some fascinating detail. And it, it proves the point that sometimes detail isn't always horrible. Okay, I like that. Yeah, that, that makes sense because, well, because of exactly what you said, you can tell it's a leaf at most any distance that you can right. even see the flag. But yeah, it is only close when you see, I, I did have to kind of like... <laughs> To your point, zoom in on the image on my phone earlier when I was looking right. it up, and I was like, "That looks a little harder to draw yes. up close than it did, <laughs> you know, at yes. first glance." But I All do right. have to say, my 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 second and third, like totally underrated, are Dwajak, Michigan, which is a very new flag, but they, it came in third place in the tournament. How are um, we spelling that? D O W. A G I A C. Okay. Weirdly, that's exactly how it was in my head. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, you don't, uh, you know, make the big bucks from a linguistics degree for no reason. Right. So, and then the other one which didn't do well in the tournament is uh, Madison, Georgia. Madison, Georgia. I don't know if I know and Madison. That's pretty Georgia. new, too. It's a very small town. I just love the way it looks, the Madison. Oh, Georgia. so it's. Kind of similar to, isn't that uh, Madison, Wisconsin's? Uh, Madison, Wisconsin's anyway? is more, isn't it a the the diagonal with the little the overhead of the state capital? Yeah, true. It I guess is, in my it head it's reminiscent. Yeah. This one has their town square on a diagonal. It's oh, okay. So I love the... maps, so it maybe that's where I got, you know, the soft spot for liking it. Right. Yeah. I, I definitely want to talk to you about maps because like, that's how I got into a lot of this stuff as well. Oh, really? And we will get there, but mm -hmm. we do have to do. So that was your underrated, right? What is your overrated and okay. listeners get ready. Yeah. Don't listen to this on the train. Don't listen to this on the L train. Don't let, yeah, yeah. Everybody sit down. Yes. <laughs> the, my overrated flag is Chicago, Illinois. Okay. Make your case. It's it's a solid flag. It's quite it's very good. I think Tulsa's is better. And one one thing that came and somebody I think in some of our whether it was, you know, in some one of these social media is like, oh, those are strong mm -hmm. words. And I'm like, I will stand by that. Um mm -hmm. is what happened is in in designing my own flags and observing all these city flags the one thing that's a really tough nut to get other than like hey how do you make it simple enough but symbolic enough that's a universal challenge but is mm. the uh contrast mm. and so i re-looked at chicago and i thought okay that's not as contrasty not that that has to be an absolute rule i mean there's right. a this one's contrasty because they got the yellow wrong on my, they printed it wrong and I didn't bother sending it back to the printer. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's more of a gold yellow, but it's actually contrasty with the gray um, yeah. in this case. But the gold yellow is actually, I forgot what the Herald, the, 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 vet, the academic Vex heads call it. It's like a um, metal on metal. You're not supposed to oh. have that. Yeah, I don't know. Um, some but, or on our jaunt action right but anyway for the chicago flag obviously the stars they stand out they're great six, i think it's six pointed or yeah. no eight point um i thought six it, but i could be wrong <laughs> either way um they're they're the really spiky ones um six. and then um but the the blue is very light and mm. you know that's fine i think it's a great flag it's still in the top 10 but you know dc might have something to say about that as does st louis which just won a recent competition um yeah yes a handful of other flags flags that go hard right right 
right? Yeah, yeah, I saw that one. I, w- I was voting for it. Mo- Actually, I think I voted Kazakhstan in the final, but okay, I do love St. Louis. Right. I was, it was hard to put myself in the in the mindset of like, all right, I love these both, but which one like quote unquote goes harder? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and in my head, that was Kazakhstan. <laughs> <laughs> you know hey it's whatever i no skin in that game anyway right i did yeah, love no, that I, tournament's mix of different source content of city flags mm. national flags historic flags and i can't remember what the fourth category was i don't either but uh whoever runs that account if you're listening or watching open invite <laughs> i do want to talk about that and just how you come up with it but anyway yeah, no, I, I can see your point on the Chicago flag. Like, it's interesting there, like, if you Google it, there are kind of, like, non-standard darker blue ones. And to me, the fact that they even, like, have those show up speaks mm-hmm. to your point. Right. Like, the the fact that they bother darkening it so that you could potentially put it on something, I don't know. Yeah, right. I I do agree that DC should have something to say about that. I I do prefer theirs mm-hmm. um chicago's i'll give them that it's remixable oh totally have that. Remixable. very remixable and part of that remixing though is kind of like usually changing that light blue stripe which you're right. saying is you know a little bit of the contrasty issue okay but yeah they, well i will say i could be convinced otherwise that uh and this is one thing we can talk about the tournament is if it's important to the Chicago community or its history, maybe mm-hmm. that, that it matters that it's a light blue. I don't know if it is. And that, then that's important. Yeah. The only thing that I knew about the blue was that it symbolizes like the, the, what the waterway is like the river right. and the, uh, the Chicago river. river and, or the bay? the Chicago river. And then the, either it's Lake Michigan or it's, <laughs> Forget the I think second. It's like is it Des Plaines River? I'm sure I'm probably butchering that. I should say that with a Chicago accent. Des Plaines? Oh, yeah, I don't know. The second accent, the second river that touches the Chicago. It's it's one of those. I feel like it's like Michigan, but I don't know. Um, right. I will say that all this talk about it and us getting it wrong will probably prompt some comments. So, hey, engagement is good for the show. So, you know, hey, tell us how wrong we are. <laughs> yes. All right. So anyway, yeah. Um, all right. So we got your over. Well, we got your favorite. We got your over and your mm-hmm. under. Uh, mm-hmm. And as you just alluded to, that 2020 uh, North American City Flags Tournament. I wanted to talk a little mm-hmm. bit about that. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess kind of I, I'll leave it up to you. But like, how did you how did you start it? And how did you pick which flags would be in it would be my mm-hmm. first question. Good question. So I started it because I introduced backing up a little bit i designed the flag behind here the base design with gold fog uh and a stenciled of this is a stencil essentially of an old 1900 flag of Mm -hmm. san francisco um and it's got some minor modifications back in 2000 2020 just or actually 2019 on halloween and it i promoted it and it was more active in it for a while but you know like we were talking i think before about some some movements they go into quiet mode for a while or Mm -hmm. disappear and i thought i don't want to just promote it again like just you know pictures on instagram and you know i thought i want to do something a little different and promote it almost in a secondary way And two sources got me um, going, gave me the aha moment. One Mm -hmm. was the Flag Institute account in the UK did it. And I think they did it four years ago too, was they did a World Cup of flags where they, in this particular year, they did every team in this men's World Cup was, had a flag and Mm -hmm. he, they did, it wasn't exactly <laughs> arranged like the World Cup tournament, but I believe there was, uh, it wasn't like a bracket the whole way. There was a, hey, take the top two 
for a while. So, oh, so I, there, there was like a group stage, like a legit. Yeah. Okay, cool. When the, and then what's cool there is it means you can have a, a like a secondary one that could actually gain yeah. momentum and possibly do what better. Right. And or if you have, as they call it, a group of death in in the World Cup, you you're not letting a great flag in this case get kicked out too early. Mm -hmm. um, so that happened. By the way, the the finals was Brazil and Wales um, for that Ooh. tournament, um, and then um, that was all on Twitter. Uh, and then at the same time, Nava was putting out its 300 plus flag. Uh, what do you call it? It's like a poll, or you rate the yeah. flag. Yeah, uh, dictionary size. Like I don't know. Right. On my phone, I had to, it's like, you're on page two of 390. Exactly. I was like, all right. Well, that, that was let's part do this. Of, I said, this is awesome to see all these flags. Yeah. Even yeah. Like, <laughs> about half to two thirds were hideous. But if, yes. But <laughs> at a certain hundred... point, the brain, like your brain almost is like, I don't know. I mean, I rated that one a two, but now I'm thinking like, should I bring that down to a one? Because like, this right. is the same shit as that right. one. And exactly. I don't know, like... <laughs> And Start it to was second guess all your low ones. <laughs> yeah, and it was a slog too. I think even if yeah. they were better flags, three hundred and ten mm. odd flags is hard to go through. I mean, I think yeah. I had to go through three <laughs> sittings for it. Um, oh, I, it was like five for me. <laughs> right. So yeah. I thought, what better way to promote? I said, wait, let's promote all the cities that have adopted flags because. That's what the Nava survey was about is cities that had adopted new flags in the last. Yeah. I couldn't tell if it was the last six years or 20 years, but I, I went back to 2000 for my. It was like 10, something yeah. is 10 or five. Yeah. I went back to 2000 just to have a, because they, their last survey was Jeez. in 04 when they did uh, the cities of America, North America. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I did some 2000, which is roughly the same. And then I said, okay, let's not do 300. <laughs> <laughs> right. I thought, okay, maybe we'll do 32 like World Cup and use that format. And then I, because I'm pretty open and chatty on Twitter and listen to people. I don't just yell at them. Um, yeah. I actually take. I've found that to be true. Yeah. <laughs> is um, that they're like, oh, what about this? Are you going to include this? And I'm like, oh that's a pretty good flag. It may not be my favorite, but it's solid. Like, okay, we'll go a little more. Well, yeah. and then the more you go, it's kind of like that. Uh, uh, you can't just go two more. You have to like, the funnel right. gets wider. Yeah. So it ended up being 80. I was going to say, I, just real quick. I ended up being one of those people that was like, Hey, what about this one? Oh, really? What are you talking about. Uh, I think I did it on the show's account. It could have been on my personal account, uh -huh. but um, it was the flag. <laughs> Listeners and flag session will laugh at this, but it was the flag of Slater, Iowa. Oh, yeah. Which I don't have a whole lot of love for, but I right. have talked about on this show so goddamn much <laughs> that it is <laughs> like it's the most anyone has ever talked. Probably more than flag session has at this right. point. Whoa, that, that, that's strong words. I know, but I, I sent it to you right. and I said, hey, it friggin' it deserves to be yeah. in here, whatever. And, it, you know, it crashed out in the first round, but still. No, and I remember that. Happy about I remember it. that. And <laughs> yeah. I thought there were a handful of, that was one of probably about six, I'm not sure, where hmm. they weren't in the NAVA survey. And right. I was happy that that and the weird Peoria County, Illinois one, which is kind yeah. of mediocre, but it's it's in there and yeah. there are a few and then somebody said hey what about gettysburg pennsylvania which is a weird like englishy looking one yeah yeah i remember seeing and that so one so i'm like okay hey let's have a few other ones in there that were intro nobody knew were introduced or they were uh, you know in 2002 or something mm -hmm. yeah that's honestly part of why i put that one in there <laughs> yeah and it and it, it can say hey it was part of the tournament even yeah, if it, exactly it, and I did, and then I the, to wrap it up. I finished it up with I did a similar format where, hey, there's round robin at the beginning, 
and at the end it's a bracket where it's you know final death the only thing way i could do the full 80 is i created this elite group that didn't have to do the round robin right they got to skip ahead but almost all of them ended up none of them made it to this the elite eight or definitely not the really i think only portland got farther along or something there was one that and i believe it's because all the other ones had a longer time to have followings to do click the votes that's sociologically interesting to be totally honest yeah. like yeah i know what you mean like uh you you kind of like have your have your candidate or have your your guy or your gal or your person mm -hmm. like your 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 thing that you follow and push yeah i get that yeah. on a certain point on a certain level that is interesting so okay so those didn't even make it so which one did end up or, or what was the final four and then and then kind of which one ended up taking it so the final four was um I'm going to mash it up. So you, this is not in order of what. Sure. Is. Yeah. So it was uh, Duluth, Minnesota. Yep. Know that um, one. And Lincoln, Nebraska, mm -hmm. Columbia, South Carolina, and Dewajak, Michigan. Okay. Which incidentally, by the way, is near South Bend, Indiana, which also has a great city flag now. Yes, yeah, they do. And who ended up taking it? Lincoln, Nebraska. Lincoln, Nebraska. I do love, I've talked about it on this show before uh, with Michael Green from Flags for Good. Who mm -hmm. sells this flag, by the way? Yes. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I love, like, I've always loved, like, Art Deco anything, you name it. Mm -hmm. So I'm honestly kind of a sucker for the Lincoln flag. Right. Do I have a couple design notes? Yeah. I oh, think yeah. I talked about them on that show with Michael. Yeah. Maybe a couple lines could be thicker, things like that. But overall, I, I do really love that flag. Right. I could see why it won. I also believe that even in this is one of the big lessons I learned in the tournament mm -hmm. was even if I don't connect with it as much, I think I kind of similar to you. I think it's kind of cool. I do think, and this got on the local news when they interviewed me for yeah. it, is oh, it's a very unique flag. And, you know, it's a very unusual in the way those almost those narrow lines in there radiating. I mean, obviously yeah. you could pick and say, oh, well, there's this other one that does that. But the combo is actually relatively unique. Mm -hmm. um, is that it does if, if a bunch of people are flying it in Lincoln and they're all proud of it, that's what matters. You know, that is. Yeah. It, it, and I don't know if they're at the level that the when they when they proposed the new versions and, and narrowed yeah. to this one, if they're at that level yet. But I'm like, hey, it, you know, it's a little bit like uh, if there was a flag, we all could agree is mediocre. But if we went to that town and it was like, oh, my God, they're really proud of their flag. It's it's doing its job then. So Slater. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I had to get a Slater jab in somewhere. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. And uh, it's the kind of stuff that I've said it before and plenty on this podcast. But I even argued with somebody in YouTube comments, which I know you should never do as a right, practice, right. just for your own mental health and everything. But uh, just like somebody was coming after the new Utah flag and saying mm -hmm. like, well, it doesn't matter, like it, flying a flag personally is not a mark of a good flag and i was like no it's exactly the mark of a good flag like it, it's normal like like nasha said last week it's normal that uh in france the town hall and and right. the this other place they have the the flag and of all course. that that's normal but for yeah. citizens to fly maybe not the national flag but like the local flag especially mm -hmm. like that's the mark of a good one i see it all yeah. the time over tennessee like it, yeah everywhere like everything is branded either with a tri-star or with the whole flag or a right, stylized right. version of the flag it is right. everywhere and that's a mark of a good one and we're starting yeah. to see that in utah thankfully yeah 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 that's exciting will, time to be in it sorry i will add that columbia made it second place and that uh, i i'd seen it i remember when it got adopted and i thought and, and 
no disrespect to Lee Snellgrove and oh. the folks that that did the hard work. I need to. They have all the videos of the town hall discussions of it. So I want to take some tips from what they did. Mm -hmm. I thought eh, it's just, it's it's a little different, but it seems a little awkward. However, the more I learned about it and the meaning, uh, it actually it because it's actually supposed to be a wing, also showing. Yeah the rivers that are converging and i actually even looked i have no idea if this was part of the design intent where the three the two rivers converge into one there's a few islands and one of them looks ex almost exactly like the flag oh really like the that kind of where the, where the colored bits are curved on one yeah. bit and yeah. flat on the other yeah. yeah huh i yeah i don't know that might be that might be the kind of accident that the uh, designer planned on taking to his grave and then you just outed right. it. But... <laughs> <laughs> like I had to tell people that there was an FFC on this flag because nobody saw it. Oh, really? And, uh, and I was, I, I like Easter eggs and shit like that. Like I'll right. always like pretty much every episode, there's something different in the background here uh -huh. for eagle eyed viewers. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I love shit like that. So I, it could be. I'm not a graphic designer, but I know graphic designers like to mess around like that. So right. it legit yeah. could be. Yeah. So that one got stuck. Yeah, that one's that one has grown on me. Uh, at first, yeah. I thought it looked like a like a blue whale almost. Just yeah. the coloring and the curvature. Mm -hmm. uh, the star was kind of you know outside of any of that, but like yeah. I don't know. It's it's grown on me. I don't know that I wouldn't like it better without the blue. Mm -hmm. that that dark or second darkest blue kind of curved right. line but i also think like like i think you said this and others it's it probably looks better flying and that but that's pretty true for most flags yeah that's what i find that's why i love getting the interesting one like uh i mean utah's looks great but a lot of people's complaint was that it looked like a like a soulless like you know 2020s graphic design thing oh, right. that would never right. look good on a flag but is okay as a logo i've had it flying out here and i shouldn't even because it's a special one right <laughs> nobody tell eric but i've had it flying out here for like four days at this point yeah because it looks so fucking good on the ball oh wow and uh yeah i mean it's i, also I, I guarantee that. this one's probably similar yeah I also believe part of that is with new designs, whatever they are, even if you have a a seal on a bed sheet garbage, even though that seal may look fabulous as a seal, that anything that's brand new, you you're gonna go, oh well, no, that doesn't represent it. I mean, I remember when Gap, yeah, the the store created a new logo. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't especially inspired, but everybody yeah. crashed on it because they weren't used to it that's an example where they're like oh whoa that seems bad enough they went back but i can't think of any right now but i'll bet there's something out there where they did a company change the logo and everybody felt weird at first but now we're all accepting it because we got used to it yep yeah, i'm sure i can't think of any i i do know the only like when i think about logos and <clears throat> like corporate ridiculousness. I think about the Pepsi logo that they oh, yeah. just rechanged back. But the one that they like they spent Wait, so much the money one? on. The 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 one that was like, yeah, they went back to it, it's it's a stylized version of the old one. Um but the one that they had, you know, for a decade or so was this ridiculous like somebody used math to say like, oh, it's like this part of the Milky Way and this part of it's like no, yeah. dude, it's uh it's just a logo so but but i feel like i mean it, it, I, this may sound seem like i'm getting sidetracked but i think it is kind of to the point a lot of brands do do that like burger king they just went back to their basically their old logo again a slightly stylized version pepsi right. has just done that i mean coca-cola classic is a classic for a reason because they almost never change it like oh um, i'll give you one we've had a NASA. lot that have been reverted nasa went had its circle with the kind of rocket shooting up one yes yeah in the 60s and then the one i grew up with and i think in the 70s and 80s was this worm kind like very 
more modern looking in for the era but then uh -huh. they jettisoned that in the 90s or 2000s and went back yeah. to the old one yeah. and they're both good ones and you know maybe when the new nasa came out it maybe everybody's like what are you doing the old one's great or they thought the old one was old-fashioned we're now in the modern 1980s yeah right yeah they could be playing the uh like the new coke game too where it's like we'll wait yeah. till they beg for us to change it back <laughs> or whatever. exactly but anyway yeah no i i have a hard time believing that uh you know communities and their flags don't you know kind of fall victim to that exact same mentality a lot of the time that's what um, i found whenever i introduced new designs is everybody's like oh that doesn't feel like san francisco and i thought well probably half of your response is you're just not familiar with it the other half may be legitimate like uh it just doesn't resonate with me there right. could be a better design right i mean that you segued better than i could i was just gonna say let's go ahead and get into the fog and gold flag because yeah, yeah everything that you just said and uh for the listeners, yes, like I said up top, he has designed the fog and gold flag for San Francisco, which is a callback to an earlier design and a replacement for uh, a tragedy, I would call it. <laughs> but um, I don't know, uh, wherever you want to start with this, like, I guess an interesting point to start at would be, you've been interested in vexillology for a while, but what got yeah. you interested in uh, the San Francisco flag and how cool it could be versus how right. lame it is there was some movement and there as they call it in san francisco the i don't think many people here will know about them there's a local social media uh hero or celebrity called burrito justice um that's his his handle and although i have met him but i i wouldn't out his real name um, sure. He, I think him in a local like online journal called mm -hmm. um, the Bold Italic um, were, and maybe one, and then I think even they, they were looking at, hey, let's do a better San Francisco flag. Um, right. Joe, in about 2012 or 2013. So this is pre Roman Mars speech. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, he came i think he and a few other people came up with <clears throat> some ideas like he created a pixelated version of the current flag <laughs> as a joke uh, another yeah. person made it look almost like a uh if you think of like the uh metallic uh what did they call them at the front of the car like of the jaguar coming out of it like a metallic example of a phoenix so there were yeah. a little bit cheek but then he even did a different one burrito justice <laughs> uh, san francisco in pixels as a map and then the left half was grayer none of them followed great flag design but it was fun and well, playful and i followed I'll just say, it doesn't sound like they were trying that hard to <laughs> correct correct yeah. so that got me you know that was kind of like the germination phase right then of course uh roman mars did his thing and i don't think i saw it right away but um you know i was like oh wow yeah Same. This, uh, you know it's year one basically um, yeah. <laughs> uh or year zero um and so i thought hey let's let i want to try to see what might be better out there and mm. um i said it doesn't have to be a phoenix maybe it, what's important to me and so i said what's symbolic to me is fog hills bridges maybe the uh, the bay and you know the water and the harbor and so i tinkered with a bunch of designs um that i shared on twitter um we can pop up a few in the post-production yeah, I was going to say, if you have any of those, send them to me. Yeah, for listeners, yeah. they'll be in the notes. And for viewers, they'll probably be on the screen. Yeah, and some of them I'm actually proud of. Some are <laughs> are like, oh, you're clearly doing a work in progress. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, trust me. I know how that goes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But that's part of the process, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, and the even with the good ones, none of them quite 
at least in the putting them out on Twitter and social media, never quite people never I'd get, oh, that looks cool or that's nice. But never like, oh, my God, that's fantastic. That should be didn't our flag. capture anyone's imagination as much as you were hoping for. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, OK. And what happened then was two things happened around the same time. So this is probably in early 2019. Mm -hmm. One was John Lumia. Lumia put out a history piece on I think it's called the original San Francisco was better and it was badass or something like that. Sure. For the 1900 flag. And then second, and it had some really, it had a really yeah. high resolution image of the original fl 1900 flag. And ah. I talked to um, Burrito Justice and he's like, hey, Brian, you should just do one with the Phoenix on it. You know, people know about the Phoenix. That'll, that'll be the bridge, you know, not yeah. the Bay Bridge, but the the link uh, to the path. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so uh, I'm like, oh, my God, I can trace this in Illustrator. And I traced that. And that's what you got here with. I, there's some very minor uh, Easter egg tweaks. So I actually know if somebody's copied the the old one or mine. Ah, gotcha. <laughs> so I, I can give away one that's the most obvious is the original. I'll point to it right here. The eye on the original one had the it, the lid was a little lower and it looked like a mean phoenix. Okay. And so I didn't want the phoenix to look so mean, so I opened the eye a little more. Yeah. You woke it up a little more. I mean, it is coming out of a fire. I, I'd be <laughs> wide awake. Right. So, yeah, and right on. Thought, hey, you know what? Let's do it. Uh, I will meticulously trace this and... Hey, it it you know, and I'd done other flags before, like I said, that were had gray fog in them or white fog, and you know, there's the gold rush and um whatnot. And so I said, Hey, what if let's keep this simple? Because the old one had a ribbon that had the city motto in it, mm -hmm. and this thing called a torse that looks like a, a towel that's been wrapped up and <laughs> in it. Um, oh, like somebody's getting ready to like whip you with a towel. Yeah, yeah, it? yeah. It's a little okay, more yeah, yeah. stylish looking, but it's very coiled. Um, gotcha. And it's I'm like, hey, why don't we just put a gray and a gold background on it, and um, and keep the colors simple uh, on the bird and the uh, flames. Yeah. And when I, you know, people saw me tinkering with it, there was some debate on. Does it go what's on top and bottom in the background? Um, mm. And but then I said, OK, pencils down. This is it. October 2019. And I was done. And then I just had to pick a time to say, OK, let's produce one, get get some support to buy the flag and actually get it. Because I knew if I really wanted to get this to be adopted, mm -hmm. It, you're never going to get it adopted just by showing a glowing screen. You right. Need yep. A physical example to ha that you have at least a fighting chance then. Yeah, absolutely. Right. So, yeah, I mean, several interesting things about that to me. Uh, one is you don't really almost ever see gray on a flag. Right. And right. I know like um, when I mean, last couple episodes, I've talked a bit about heraldry uh, with the guests and. In heraldry, you know, it is, uh, there, there's silver, obviously, that goes along right. with it, the argent, or right. however they want to pronounce it. Um, but that usually, in flag terms, gets translated to white. Right. So, was there any kind of, like, um, I don't know, I guess I'm, I'm wondering how you picked the, the colors that you did pick. Like, what inspired you to pick, like, that gray, that yellow? Uh, so... The, I knew it needed, I wanted some shade of gray because I thought if I did white and I see fog many times of the year out of my window, sure. it's yeah. not always gray. It can look like a white cloud coming over. It, you know, behaves a little differently, but it can mm. be white. So it's not wrong to make it white. But I thought from a flag symbolism point of view, doing white would be, oh, that's white. And you wouldn't think fog. Yeah, so that it, was it's why more I went with gray. 
Yeah, I, I like it. It's more clear. It's more like I guess it's more like straight to the point. Plus, it's more unique. Like as we right. just said, and I like, knew I can't think of yeah. another one. That's that was my other thing that was kind of a secondary thing was like, hey, nobody has a great, great or very few. I think if you do a deep dive, there's a handful. Sure. Um, yeah. And they're often a small part of a more complicated flag. Um, right. Right. Um, and so I but I, I have tinkered with the shades of gray. Like, if it, is it darker? Is it lighter? Um, I haven't tinkered so much with what's the origin color, whether it's a blue gray or a, a red gray or whatever. It's normally it, it's for Pantone people. It's cool gray. Um, mm -hmm. It's but the varying shades um, for the yellow or the gold. I just wanted something that felt goldy to me. Like that's yeah. why I am. Um, this one is a little too yellow. Um, right. <laughs> um, if yeah. I, we can pull it out. This is the original one here. It's a little. This is the original color. Whoops, I'll go that way. This is okay, yeah. Color. So that's a little more yellowy, uh, you know, rich gold. Right. But as you can see, the bird is very red and the flames are orange. And that has evolved. And the idea yeah. originally was the flames are orangey, sort of like the Golden Gate Bridge or the birds kind of like, but you can't, if you do the actual Golden Gate Bridge mm. color, it looks a little too dusty. Okay. Yeah. Um, but then I'm like this red. And I think even Ted K, when I got in the local newspaper said, yeah, it's, yeah, it's not bad, but you know, the contrast with the bird and the, the red and the isn't so great. And I'm like, let's go for a very burnt red. And that's what, how the bird got to almost this brownish color. Um, gotcha. But that also jives with two things. One is that the local bus system, the Muni, mm -hmm. often, especially their more historic colors, they have very dark brown jackets. Um, and so it, it kind of, and then there's a little bit of that vibe, even though it's more black is the San Francisco Giants baseball team has a, a bit of that yep. black and orange look, which a brown doesn't clash with. Right. Yeah. It's I, interestingly enough. I don't know if I ever noticed it was brown. I thought of it as like a darker gray. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, I don't know. But 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 the thing is, too, uh, to what you've said, I, I have seen different versions of it, different versions yeah. that that you've come out with. I mean, all right. of them are our variants of yours, but uh, well, like, where are you at kind of now with it? Because like, I know the one that the viewers can see behind you and that you've described mm -hmm. for the listeners is not like, well, or maybe it is. Well, you said you weren't in love with the gold on it, but like, I, where are you at right now with it? Have you, you've taken like a few polls yeah. and things, if I remember. Yeah. I've done what? Say that again. I, if I remember, you've taken a few polls or at least kind of reached oh, out right. to see like who yeah, would yeah, yeah. order one were you to right. Uh, right. make a run right. of this style or that. Right. So the, the, I'd say that, that there was the original one that came out where the bird was more of a red and the flames were definitely more orange. Mm. That got changed to similar to what you see here uh, to a brownish bird with a slightly red or orange. Yeah. flame about a year and a year and a half ago and that was mostly about contrast to try to fulfill the contrast whilst keeping with the spirit of the colors right right but i think around the time i did the tournament um and talking to a few people both social media and directly um the idea came out was oh so i can't take full credit for this is that, oh, you really should have the gold on top and the gray on bottom. And on top of that, they said having it in the middle of the flag makes it awkward where it hits the bird. And I, so I won't they, lie, I, I kind of agree with them. Yeah. And so, you know, at first I'm like, I knew because way back when I was like, I'm like, hey, it, gold can go on top, gray can go on bottom. But I stuck with that for a while. But now it's right. been 
almost three years. So yeah. much like Tara's done, you can tinker and don't don't be you're just trying to make it better. Um and so I thought, okay, let's uh, actually John Lumia was one of the ones that has always been whispering in my ear, mm. not physically, but um, <laughs> email, like, hey, come on, gold on top. It's a golden future. It's a uh uh fog actually is not it's in the air, but it's near the ground. Uh not right on the ground. Um but that is a good said, no, but fog's up in the sky, gold's on the bottom, it's our foundation. So you can spin it either way. I was gonna and say yeah, you can justify almost anything if you just right. make that the design notes. <laughs> right. And so that by moving the gold down to about the, the original one had it quite low, not to the bottom of the flames. This this other guy, I forgot his name, but I could, he was on Reddit. Mm -hmm. um, and I and he actually wanted to move the, the whole bird and flame closer to the hoist which i understand the idea behind it but i didn't like the way it looked sure and so i said you know what let's let's be open you know you might i might have gone hey why are you messing with my design but i'm like hey my goal yeah. is i want a better city flag even if they don't pick this one i'm fine i just right. want a better one and a yeah. lot better one that's a running theme these last last few yeah yeah so basically it's flipping the colors in the background and then I made it so that it could go as high as possible in the flames for the where the boundary of the grand gold was. So it's the middle lick of the flame right right there. Yep. And yep. now there's it's about one third gray in the background and and I'm slowly introducing it. I, I know you were supportive of it and I'm waiting to yeah. get the first batch, a few uh two little small ones and two big ones. I think one of them's gonna have your name on it. Um, cool. I was so, I was gonna say, yeah, I've been asking. <laughs> yeah, and that I'm because of that flip in the background. It also means they interplay differently with yes. the flame and the and so I've been tinkering with the flame and the the bird color, right. even though it won't be that dramatic, but it's just fine tuning it. Right, and it matters to you as the designer. Something that right. somebody else would not even notice. Mm -hmm. is something that you're going to probably spend like at least three hours on. Like yeah. <laughs> if you're anything like, like me and like most of the people I talk to that have graphic design as a passion or a hobby or mm -hmm. what have you. Um, but yeah, no, I am excited to, uh, to get that one when I do get it. Um, so I, I wanted did, to hear, I, did, I just wanted to mention, I did yes. get somebody. It's really cool. Bought a very large one, an eight by five one, a few years ago, and they have a flagpole mm. on their building. It's Is... all in tatters now. And they said, "Oh, can we buy a new one?" And then I said, "Oh, by the way, I'm going to show you this new version." Yeah. I said, "What do you think?" And she was the first person who liked the old one, but said, "This one, the new one's better." Yeah. So then, there's your answer. Yeah. And honestly, that's like, um, I mean, to a lot of like, uh, to any listeners who are graphic designers, you know, that's like the one, like, I, I am not a graphic designer. I'll caveat it that way. Uh, I have done some flag designs, some of which are better than others. Mm -hmm. But I mean, yeah, be open to criticism like that. Um, take like collaborative notes like that, because mm -hmm. if a lot of people are telling you, hey, first off, we love your design, but maybe yeah. tweak this one thing like yeah. be open to it and, and yeah. honestly if you're like me you won't be open to it at first exactly but you'll open up <laughs> yeah. so and no, I, think example, I, could, I could get another design even print it and go oh this is cool but i still like the old one yeah but i yeah. did go through the process sure yeah plus like you can have i mean so, uh flags for good is going to start producing these right here in oh, a right. slightly like better version, basically, especially the embattled uh, uh, side on the fly here in a better version. But I'm still going to hang on to that one because it's the prototype yeah. and I love it. Exactly. You know, like exactly it's it's cheap and it's kind of eh, whatever, but right. I love it. So um, I, I did want to hear. So uh, I don't know how much time we have to get into California's, but I want to okay, nail down on San Francisco's. What's that? Yeah, I, I'm all for California. 
Well, I was going to say, like, I-, I wanted to nail down a little bit more on San Francisco's because what we haven't gone over and what I wanted to hear in your own words, and I want to have some fun graphics down here at the bottom is why does the San Francisco flag need to be replaced in your um, words? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a saga. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, because the, the, the one we have right now is a gold border on a white field with a a, depending on which flag maker or online version you get it's kind of a chickeny looking bird over a red flame that looks more like a crown and Mm -hmm. some of them have that torse that wet that wet towel wrap up thing in it but it's pretty minor Um, yeah and then it says in blue almost like worse than ariel font san francisco which oh. is they they put it was created in 1940 when we were about to have a world's fair and they're like well nobody will know what the flag is we better put the name on it um all too common of a of a scenario yeah, yeah i will admit by then the california flag was official and our we're one of the few states where i would say the text actually can work ironically um So I know my hometown of Fresno says Fresno on the flag. The Oakland flag says Oakland on it. So there are a number of cities in California that probably said, hey, look, the state flag has it. We should do ours. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, it's pretty, I think the only good thing about it is the symbology of a phoenix because we had a ton of fires actually in the 1850s where most of the city burned and we came back. And then after this 1900 flag was created, of course, is the famous great 1906 quake, where uh, I believe almost a third of the city burned. Um, So that's great, even though it's a crappy design. And the word stuck. I like the gold border. That's okay. Um, But it, oh, it also has the motto. I love that. (laughs) I think it also has the motto and a ribbon on it. And it's just way too detailed. And yeah, uh, I will say, and you probably know this by now, but when I Google San Francisco flag, yours is the fourth result that shows up. Yeah. Your yeah. early version with the red uh, eagle yeah. or the red phoenix, yeah. rather. Right. So, hey, moving on up in the world. Right. I'm, my next goal is to try to, I'm doing kind of the Milwaukee flag technique mm. slightly. I just try to get it out there and it almost becomes, oh, well, that's the de facto flag yeah um is my next effort is to try to get some of our cable cars the historic cable cars they have an american mm-hmm. flag and mm. a city flag and yeah. i know some people that work for that agency no 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 guarantee but say hey why don't you put the fog and gold flag up there instead that's there one i'm trying to get to a famous hotel in town to they fly a, the american flag and a um uh, other international flags and then say hey what i mean that'll be a little bit harder maybe i mean the both won't be for sure but yeah that's the idea yeah no i love that as a as a as a strategy but the it's funny because like when you google san francisco flag like i said yours is the fourth but even among the other ones there's variation which speaks to what you were saying is like there's there's not a whole lot of like uh uh like it's not very well codified it's like yeah, it's, it, yeah it and it's whenever we codify a change we'll have to be a lot more firm about it yeah and apparently this happened and i was just reviewing this the california flag the the notion of it was i believe in 1910 or 11 but it didn't get codified with this exact look until 1935 or something so the, you can't create a different looking bear and right. a star and the weird grass it's walking on. Um, yeah. Yeah. I am seeing that now. Um, yeah. The 1953 legislation to find the exact shades anyway. Right. Um, there may have been an earlier. Oh yeah. Until, until 53, the image of the bear varied depending on the flag manufacturer. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. the same thing with the Phoenix on yours. Yes. Yeah. 
just you know the wild west of vexillology over there there's one that there's one that looks kind of cool uh, i think by i'm not sure which flag company it was but they don't exist in, i think paramount was their name they had the flames rather than just being one color they they were kind of almost interlaced and there were two shades of red and orange and it looks kind of interesting but it's very different in look yeah for sure I think I'm looking at the one. Um, yeah, no, the California flag, like we have, uh, we don't have a ton of time to go into it, but like mm -hmm. enough anyway. How, like, what are your, let's like broad strokes it. What are your thoughts on the California flag? I know you said you don't mind the words so much on it, but uh, right. but outside of that. I think that it, it's another example, like kind of we were saying about the Union Jack, where it's kind of complicated, but it works. Obviously, that's more of a graphic flag. This yeah. one, there's so much detail in the bear, and I, I don't know how much detail. I'm not looking at right now, but the grass has probably degree. And there's like, four yeah, the grass has a few of those little like you know patches, like yeah. I would draw if I were yeah. to do it. And it's got <laughs> like six colors, I think, which I personally don't think is verboten if you put it together well. So it defies the detail, but somehow, just the maybe it's because of the picture they picked for the bear and that blue, this the combination i think works really well uh and it because it's a bear sadly we killed them all off so it's much like some flags where it's fraught with the yeah. history yeah um, is that uh but that that being said it's it's very identifiable um and hey look it's a bear from the a profile picture of a bear and it looks pretty tough but not mean um yeah and yeah, they, i think it's been argued that the repub saying california are we had a revolt like texas did mm -hmm. although texas legitimately became its own country right even if, even if for only a few years yeah we had a, a bunch of upstarts in sonoma california that said mm -hmm. bear flag revolt and said we're a new country so in another ironic way it really wasn't a country but some have argued that saying california republic is a almost like a sub subconscious or a you know mind mind game of we're special and different and can do what we want it does i mean like it's a really good example of how flags just kind of like are absorbed into lots of different kinds of media because like i feel like the flag and the fact that it says california republic the fact that it has this strong bear on it i feel like is reflected like there are song lyrics that say california republic there are mm -hmm. like the there are bears like repped on everything like it creeps into other forms of media uh mm -hmm. and to its credit i think in this case it, it's one of the weirdest flags just based on like I guess just like on divided opinions of it, because like you said, like it has the words, like it breaks the rules. It's not that easy to draw if you, you know, if you want to get it right and include the shading uh, on the bear in the grass, like it's, it, it breaks a few of the rules and yet it's so iconic that you can't like, so like uh, flags for good, like Michael, he yeah, yeah. on the, the first time, like he came on the show, I was before I was doing video, but first time he was on, he was talking about his California redesign and I do really like it. It's a mm -hmm. simplified version of this where the bear is a, it's just an all red. It's the same red as the, the bar at the bottom. It's simple. Even he said, I like it, but I like the original better. There's just something about this flag that, that, that warrants being included in lyrics and, and, and paintings. And like, like, I don't right. know. It's, I, you it's got a draw. Do. I will send you, I did a version of the California flag mm. without, without the words, but everything else is the same, right? Did you recenter anything or? I made the bear slightly bigger. Okay, gotcha. So that, you know, because it's giving room for the text. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm like, oh, that i mean it's it's not bad it's good i mean i'm obviously not really reinventing it fully right right um but uh it's uh what do you call it um an homage it, it lacks that uh the the weight of the what do you
do you call it? You know, the, the, I'm going to put it, send it to you on discord so you can see it right away. Um, it's not okay. quite as exciting in some ways. The gravitas, the, I don't know what word we're going for here. It is. Yeah. I mean, like, exactly. It's really good, mm -hmm. but it's not the same. Right. And that's like the, the, I think the California flag is like one of the most like enigmatic ones that I've talked about. And, you know, Maryland gets strong reactions as well. Oh, yeah, I, am, yeah. I am a hater. There are a lot of lovers. Uh, there's not I too many in between. Tara on that one? Uh, Tara hates the influx of Maryland into Pennsylvania. The influx of... I think she likes the Maryland flag. I don't know. You can ask I, her. I want, if I had to pick a word to guess, it would be envy. Not Envy. So envy is probably the operative. Yeah. She it's will probably... The it's the, the, the how it's everywhere. Yeah. I mean, check her Twitter or check the Keystone Twitter. Yeah. It's like uh, a lot of her tweets are like, hey, uh, so Maryland's flag is great. They even have this invasive species just like their flag is. We should have a good one that, you know, we get to spread far and wide. Right, right. They just, you know, lucked out on one or not lucked, but they got one. But well, um, Michael knows this. There is hope for a potential at least display of a alternate California flag. One of the I don't want to say too much because it might not, may not happen, but there are two big flagpoles in San Francisco and I'm working with somebody. They, they had to work on some other project, but my goal is to have two massive flagpoles, one with a, a fog and gold flag on it, whatever is the current version at the time mm -hmm. and a, uh, an alternate or the, maybe the regular California flag on it. So for right. anybody out there trying to create a, an iconic, similar new flag, s send them over. Um, they probably have to have a bear on it. But other than that. Um... <laughs> yeah, there, there is a long history of bears, and I'm sure I'll, I'll put them in the show notes and probably in the that, video. On a, but... foot, on a footnote that speaks to there's way too many flagpoles out there with zero flags on them. Um, oh, agreed. That's. The two flagpoles I have in mind are they're like 80 feet tall. Um Oof. and the these would be like 20, 20 by 15 foot flags. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I was just reading that the the flag was even designed by Donald Kelly, which was based on a flag flown during the Bear Flag Revolt. So yeah, yep. that, that bear on the flag goes deep, y'all. <laughs> yeah, and it's officially called, at least per Wikipedia, the bear flag of California. It's it not... is, yeah. Bear flag even redirects here, if you will. Yeah. Um, all Family right, yeah, no, that's all awesome. The bears. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm sure we could talk at great lengths about the flag of California, but we yeah. have to move into the quiz section of this. Uh -oh. If I could... Okay, I'm gonna, I'm, get, I'm getting sweaty bring up oh yeah yeah and it's on the your favorite flag the yeah. flag of the united kingdom so uh oh let's, let's get into the uh the intro music here which okay. i still haven't trimmed down right we've got questions and answers Whatever. and if you know the answers go ahead and say the answers and i will be content i will be content and then quiz time there it is okay nice. cool all right i'll probably have to redo that in post but we will figure it out won't we first right, right. <laughs> anyway i've got the quiz music ready to go are you ready to go i'm ready all right so quiz on the uk flag question one mm -hmm. what four countries make up the united kingdom what four countries england yes. scotland wales and northern ireland that is correct and you'll be happy to hear that i now have the music on repeat instead of just the one time <laughs> okay so those are the four countries in the uk what three countries are represented on the flag england scotland and northern ireland uh that is correct question three on a scale of one to ten how messed up is that that's about a nine out of ten messed up. About a nine. Yeah. Yeah. That's correct. No wrong answers on that one. Yeah. Uh. All right. For A, 
Mm-hmm. Question 4A. That's right, Here's folks. Where the tough ones begin. Yeah, yeah. Name the three saints that the crosses are named after. Oh, crap. Okay. George, Andrew, and. Oh, crap. What is Ireland? Oh, come on. Oh, uh, Patrick. Yep. <laughs> It'd be that one. Yeah. <laughs> to come and, on with uh, a subtle clue. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, 4B, Saint Dragon. Yeah, right. 4B for a bonus point. Name the Welsh saint that would appear if they were represented. Oh crap. Um, Llewellyn. Really good guess. It's Saint David. <laughs> hey, at guess. least I think a uh, Welsh. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's see. Question 5A, what was the common name for the flag from 1707 to 1801 before the St. Patrick's Cross was added? Ooh. The Union flag. Is it the Union flag? I think that is an acceptable answer. The one I was going for was King's Colors. Oh, okay. The common That's one, and if you... if Yeah, and if you're searching to buy this one online, as I have before... Search for King's Colors. All right, that was 5A. Question 5B, spell colors. C-O-L-O-S. In Correct, Brits. All right, question six. <laughs> uh, on what episode did I cover this flag with friend of the show, Kick Acetron? <laughs> Kick Acetron? Oh, wasn't that episode five? Mmm... I don't think so. I think it was three. <laughs> okay. Uh, it could have been five. I'll look that up later. All right. Question seven. What is 13 times 13? That is not 169. Indeed it is. The first one to get that. Although I know I'm not the first to get that. Uh, you're the first. Uh, you're the first that counts. Yeah. And question eight. When flown correctly, which cross is, quote, above the other on the fly side? Uh, oh, I believe, ooh, I believe the uh, Patrick flag is above. I, I mean, I the Patrick flag is which? The uh, Irish one is above the Scottish flag. Uh, the uh, uh, no. Incorrect. Okay. It is, I think, in Tarith will probably put in the notes or, or somewhere, but there's some rhyme they use. I think it's like white on the top. I forget what it is, but the white goes on the top. Just a quick note there. Brian actually did get that one right. I had it written on my sheet as hoist, but I said fly. So good job. Right. All right. So let me score that. Uh oh. So this looks like a B, and Ooh. that stands for Brian. Plus plus. Nice. By the Good way, job. have you seen there is a version of the Union Jack flag where the St. Andrew's flag gets dominated? Yeah. The, and it's Wait, gets dominated or dominates? It, it is the dominant color yeah. or design and that the St. George's cross is, is there, but it's more yeah. in the background. Yeah. Anytime an Andrew is dominant, I am there for it. And uh, yeah, I do love that one. It, it's funny, like looking it up online too, because it's it, there's so many little like footnotes that are like this one was flown in Scotland like once, and then somebody got mad, and then another time, right. and the government complained, right. and then <laughs> it's funny. Right. Anyway, um, yeah. So that was pretty much well, not pretty much. That's our show for this week. But before mm-hmm. we get out of here, it is time to do some plugs. So. Brian, where can people find you, find the fog and gold flag, follow you, maybe make some purchases if they want, anything like right. that? Right. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at SF Fog Gold Flag. And you can find uh, the shop and um, some very old blog posts about the flag at my website at sffoggoldflag.com. And uh, you might just see me walking around San Francisco holding a six-foot pole of the fog and gold flag. Yeah. 
that's a nice bookend because I opened the show with that that little tidbit right. as well. So, right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, go find him, follow him there. Uh, he's a really fun follow. Go find us and follow us. I think the easiest point really is our link tree. So if you know how link trees work, ours is flagged for content with the F O R spelled out. Uh, that pretty much has all of our links on it. But if you're not keen on that, uh, anywhere there's an at sign, we are at flagged the number four content and on YouTube, it's all spelled out. But if you're watching, I suspect, you know, that anyway, um, that was pretty much all I had. I thought I had like one more. Th oh yeah. Shit. I was going to close the show, but mm -hmm. I don't ever know how to do this. Do you have anything that know. can maybe help? Um, let me think, huh? Uh, maybe like a, a poem. Have yeah, you had yeah, a, poem, a little ditty. Poem? What have you? Yeah, a little ditty. You know, like think of some like ethereal music here. You know, okay. Um, okay, ready. Now it's time to say goodbye, goodbye, sweet vex heads. Close your eyes, and I'll close mine. A billowing flag, oh so high, flapping so beautiful, I don't know why. Goodbye, sweet flag, may you glow with pride and carry us together as our guide. Goodbye, everybody. Everywhere. Goodbye, and thank you, Ringo Starr and the Beatles, for inspiration. <laughs> Thank you, them. Thank you to you. This has been an amazing episode. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. This episode has been Flagged for Content. Flagged for Content is a Flags for Good podcast. Go to flagsforgood.com for more info.